What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. Tonight, we're going to talk about all things uh, topwater redfish. It's a great time of year to throw topwater for redfish. You can use it as a great tool to locate the fish and to really fire the fish up. Um, you know, it looks like an injured bait fish on the surface. We're starting to get bigger bait uh, up along the East Coast from Virginia down to South Carolina, even into Georgia. Um, topwater's really becoming a, 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 a necessary uh, piece of tackle that you need to be throwing this time of year. So, uh, we're going to be talking about that. Before we get into it, I want to let y'all know about the sponsor of the show right now, and that is First Class Glass. They do boat work here in Wilmington, North Carolina. They do a bunch of uh, a bunch of um, work for a bunch of the dealerships around here. They do a bunch of uh, really any kind of fiberglass work you need done. Full restorations of older boats, um, ding repairs on boats. Uh, they can paint motor cowlings. They can really take you know a really old boat and make it look brand new. They can fix little things on it for you. They they're the they're the place to go here in Wilmington if you need any fiberglass work done. So that's first class glass. Um, I'll link them in the description of the show and of the podcast and the YouTube video, so you can check them out there. Uh, but if you need to get that boat looking right before summer, uh, need any structural stuff done, just check out First Class Glass. I also want to thank Ice Strike Fishing. Uh, love being part of that that group there, and they're huge supporters of this show. Um, and so, always want to shout out Ice Strike Fishing. But yeah, definitely check out Ice Strike and First Class Glass. Um, check out our Facebook group. Um, you can check out Jeff, who's going to be our guest tonight. Um, his Facebook's Jeff Kid. Mine's Judd Brock Fishing. You can check out Eastern Kern on Instagram and Facebook, um, on YouTube, on pot on the podcast platforms. Um, and that is enough of me plugging before the show. We're gonna go ahead and get right on into the nitty gritty. Bring on Jeff here. What's going on, man? Hey, how's it going, man? Oh, pretty good. Jeff is a trooper. I texted him like ten minutes ago. I said, "Hey, can you record a podcast tonight?" <laughs> and he's like, uh, "Let me check my dinner plans." All right, I can do it. So here we are. I realize it's Thursday and I hadn't done anything yet. Life's just getting busy, busy. But I wanted to get a podcast out for y'all tonight. Uh, and like I said, we're going to talk topwater redfish. But before we get into that, Jeff's got some big news about what might happen tomorrow. Oh, yeah. can you share it? Too soon. You don't want to speak too soon. Don't want to speak too soon. But yeah, hopefully we'll we'll be getting a new boat tomorrow morning. So. Ooh. Very excited. A little bit of a Very poser. Exciting. He might be getting the same boat that I have, but uh, you know, it's a little <laughs> bit, uh, you, you know, there's only one perfect boat, and that's the Maverick HPXS. So uh, I don't blame you one bit. Uh, but yeah, super stoked, and uh, it'll be be cool to uh, to have it all done. I mean, you've you've ridden the Mitzi hard and put her up wet. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've uh, definitely ridden that boat pretty hard. It's it's bittersweet, you know letting go of a, a baby of yours i've kind of pretty much learned to fish on that thing so yeah it's definitely hard to let her go but you know can't can't have too many boats no you, so. well yeah you need you need about five boats really so I mean, <laughs> but you know, I, yeah. you know i think you'll be real stoked with that boat i know you were talking about the watermans and the um were you looking at whip rays too How's about Whip Ray? Yeah, we're going to Waterman's Whip Ray, Professional. And Professional. HPX, yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. For sure. I, I think uh, th- you really can't go wrong with any of those boats, but um, they're, they're, they're all, they all do the do what we need here in North Carolina pretty well. So, for uh, sure. I agree. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, let's talk about topwater redfish. There's a lot. Yeah. It, there's, there's nothing to talk about, and there's a lot to talk about at the same time. So <laughs> we'll get into yeah, right? it. Uh, I guess let's kind of start out with, um, I really want to focus on top water this time of year because it's more, I mean, it, and all of that translates into the whole season, into the summer, into the fall. Um, but, but let's talk a little bit at first about why it's such a good tool this time of year. Like, what's your opinion on, cause, cause for me, I see like on a group of fish the other day, we were catching them, having trouble getting them to fly. They were eating soft plastics, but not really well. And then we threw a top water and it was like a whole different group of fish showed up. Um, what do you, yeah. Excuse me. What do you think that is about a topwater plug that kind of triggers that that kind of mentality in those of those fish? Yeah, man. I mean, so obviously a topwater is is imitating an injured bait fish. So sometimes that that easy target will just trigger those fish and fire them up. They see an easy, you know, easy meal. They're they're on it. So For I sure. mean, this time of year when they're starting to, to split up a little bit, you can really cover a lot of ground with those topwater plugs and, and as the water's heating up they're definitely getting more of an appetite and open to eating more aggressive baits like topwaters so it's, for uh, sure it's definitely a good bait to be throwing it, it's kind of funny how the topwater can so quickly for me change from like a bait that i have zero confidence in to like my most confident bait to throw when i'm just kind of blind casting around 
Oh um, yeah. And, you know, I'll throw in a swim bait right now, blind casting. If I'm just working through an area, even if I know there's fish there, but they're kind of in a large zone. I just, I feel like there I'm covering very little water with that top water. I'm like, they're at least going to show themselves. So they, they get yeah. so competitive too. They really get so competitive after a top water plug. Right. Yeah. A lot, a lot of times, if, you know, if you're in a concentration of fish, you'll see 10 or so following the top water plug right up, right up to the boat. Almost. Yeah. Oh yeah. There was this one time in Louisiana. I got a video of it actually. That's the only reason I know this happened, but it was on a, one of those schools of big bulls <laughs> floating around. And I think you've probably seen this, but we were just throwing a cork to him, like with no, we were we had had a popping cork tied on. We cut the leader off, or cut the the hook off, and everything. And we we're just playing with the fish. And I've got this kid just reeling it in across the surface as fast as he can, and these fish are just popping at it. And two fish come from either side of the plug, and just <laughs> drill each other right in the face, just cr- crash <laughs> and crumble right into the plug. It's it's crazy. Um, but how, it, how'd you get a video of it? Was were you just filming from the boat? Or? I was just filming from the boat. All the all the chaos of them chasing that cork around and that happened funny. to get that. Um, it turned out super clear too. I shot it on my iPhone, but it turned out really really clear, which was cool. Um, but yeah, I mean that that that's what's so cool too. I think you know as a fish rises up to the surface after something, I think that gets the attention of all the other fish around too, and kind of draws them in when a fish shows that aggression. And you'll see it throwing a fly or sight fishing in general. You'll see fish, multiple fish, kind of key in on something, but but never quite as many as you see on a topwater. Even a flat topwater fly or anything like that, like yeah. it can pull a lot of fish. Do you think that more has to do with like it triggering aggression, or it, it's loud and visible, and and if fish from further away are feeling it? Definitely can can I kind of see both ways, yeah. really. You know, when you got them big, schooled up like you're talking about bull redfish, that's just triggering straight aggression. Yeah. They get competitive and they're trying to get after that bait for sure. Right. But other times, you know, it's it's definitely more of like a search thing where they can hear it from from a further distance and, and it gets their attention real quick. Definitely. It's, uh, you know, it, we're starting to get to the time of year where there's more bait than fish in the creeks. But yeah. We're still kind of in that zone where there's maybe more redfish than bait in certain areas. <laughs> And right. so when something that's a decent chunky meal, like a topwater comes through, like they, they want, those fish want it. Um, yeah. And we actually hooked two fish yesterday. Um, we didn't land both of them, but one had eaten the plug and it was hanging out of its mouth. And another one came up and grabbed it like 10 feet from the boat, hanging out of its mouth. And they were both on there for a second um, oh, man. and pulled the hook out. But it just shows how, how darn aggressive they are. Uh, what yeah. What kind of... So let's go over kind of cadence now too. I think that's important, and and it's everyone kind of has similar but different tactics. Um, let's kind of share with me what you like to do if you're like as far as retrieve goes. And we're just right now just talking like a, a typical topwater plug. So we're gonna get into some other baits, but like just a, a single a, a, like a simple walk the dog style plug. Um, okay. If you're blind casting or if you're sight fishing to fish, is there any difference between the way that you're retrieving that bait? Hmm. You know, I I would say, you know, when I'm trying to just find fish, uh, I'll I'll probably speed it up a little bit more. Whereas if I'm in an area where I think there's fish, I'll I'll probably slow it down and work that area a little bit more aggressively and yeah. kind of work it slow just to kind of get more time within the strike zone. But you know, it's yeah, it's kind of it's kind of different just depending upon the scenario and. A lot of times, if I'm not getting a bite on one cadence, I'll switch it up and start speeding it up a little bit or, or slow it down if yeah. I'm already going fast. So it just kind of depends and got to feel around for it. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, I I'd say mine's pretty similar. If I'm if you know if I'm just looking for a reaction from the fish, whether I see them or not. Um, but but I think one of the big things is like that speeding it up. Like the you get the fish interested in the plug and they push up behind you. you'll see that so often on a lot of casts this time you're like you might be parked on a school of fish and you might get fish following it every single cast you know you throw it over school and some fish come up right. and follow it um but sometimes like a little difference in the movement or the speed uh can make those fish you know it's like they're sitting there just waiting to kill that bait and, and something that changes just a little bit can can a lot of times do it and a lot of times it's speed but also, if you kind of make that top water plug, I've noticed skip a little bit. Like I've always noticed, clients sometimes will be working a bait, and the fish gets behind it, and they get kind of nervous and like work it too fast, and it kind of walks wrong a couple times, or like skips under the yeah. surface just a little bit, and the fish will come crush it right then. Um, just changing up that 
making it look like that bait fish slips up a little bit when right when those fish are in pursuit of it can sometimes get that bite um, yeah it definitely makes a lot of sense right it's it's imitating an injured bait fish so they're just waiting for it to slip up like you're saying and yeah. then they're you're ready to strike on it for sure it's uh it's very exciting it, it especially i know this sounds kind of jaded but like coming out of the winter where you're just kind of lobbing soft plastics in the middle of a school and sometimes they're lethargic and you're just dragging it until you feel the bite it's really nice to just watch some fish charge after something on the surface and smoke it it kind of yeah, brings that excitement that's... back yeah for a little bit in the winter I, I get to the point where i'm like all right nice fish bring it on in <laughs> popping it off and letting it go um, because yeah. you can't really see the eats a lot of times in the schools if they're right. out of the distance. And so getting that visual aspect back, which we get so much of the summer and spring is real, real cool. Um, right. Are there any specific uh, colors that you like to throw this time of year? Um, I usually throw black and orange or maybe, maybe yellow. Um, sometimes, sometimes pink, but I would say my go-to color would be uh black and orange that like 808 like, that um yeah with a little bit of throw, gold in it i throw the the, the mirror lures a lot I, I forget what color they call it but gold mullets in the skitter walk is kind of similar to that yeah, color yeah. Mm-hmm. um any of, like the heat and spook I, I don't know what they call it, all the colors they are I'm trying to see if i've got here's the color irks nah that's not 808 um i don't have it in here oh yeah this is it it's on a tiny little mirror lure but just yeah, like the black yeah. black back with a little bit of like gold and some orange on it, um, that uh, yeah, that colors. It's funny, dude. I, I bet intercoastal angler sells five times as many of that color topwater plug than anything else. It's so weird. I just think it stands out a little bit better. You know, I it think does. they can just see it. They 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 can see it from a greater distance. They hear that plug and they turn on it and. They might be 10, 15 feet away from it, and they're kind of tracking the sound of right. it. And all of a sudden, they see it from a greater distance, and they, you know, they're on it. For sure. Or suppose something that's maybe a little bit of a lighter color, or, or even clear, they're gonna maybe have a harder, harder time of tracking it. Yeah, uh, I, I'd agree with that for sure. It's, uh, it seems like a lot of the times color doesn't necessarily matter with redfish. It's like right. if they're gonna eat a top or they're gonna eat it, but there's definitely certain colors that I've seen them. And not necessarily one in general, but they'll get kind of keyed in on something or they'll like something a little bit better. Something might be too bright. Um, something might be too dark if it's real bright outside. Uh, the the plug I've been throwing lately is that someone from the podcast sent them to me. It's someone I had on the podcast. One of his buddies paints plugs down in Texas. It's the Salty Plugger was the name of the, the baits that he makes. But uh, it was a custom Spook Jr. And it's all white with a little red under the chin and black around the eye. And then it's got some silver stripes down the side. Um, and it looks just like a, I mean, the color looks a lot like a pinfish almost on the surface, but dude, they have been, been crushing it. They've been really, really liking it. Um, but have one? do what do you have one with you? I've got one in my boat, so I can't, I'm not going to mm. run out there and get it right now, but, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll try to, I'm not gonna be able to pull up the picture, but, but yeah, it, natural, you know, some natural colors. It seems like the white, stuff with white and silver in it right now works really well. Like I've, I've started to see, and when I've fished, fish and shrimp for a little bit for black drum today at the end of the day and um had some little pinfish and croaker uh that we call on that and so those little fish are starting to show up and redfish love pinfish spot croaker all that stuff um and so i think a lot of times that's kind of what those top waters are resembling are a busted up pinfish on the surface this time of year because we don't have the mullet yet and the mud minnows are never on the surface or on the bottom the only thing that's kind of elevating the water column are those pinfish um and whatnot so that's kind of mimicking that color i think can could be beneficial but i mean you know like we said have a have a variety of colors and and go through them sometimes maybe more it's for the angler than the fish as far as all the colors you can get but um i don't know uh so here's something that is important to share um and i want to hear your take on it too because the rule can definitely be broken but as you know i would say 90 percent of the time i never want anyone to stop the plug you know, on a retrieve for redfish, especially not after it gets blown up. But I've also seen where I've had a, a day. I know Cameron's had a day where like they don't want to eat it until it stops, but that's so rare. Um, what's your take on it? Uh, 100%. And most of the time it's, it's typically by mistake, right? right. 
when you're, when you're working a plug and you, you stop for a second and all of a sudden you just hear a blow up and you turn and your your plug's gone, right? Yeah. But I, I, you know, 100%, it definitely seems like, it seems like, you know, that never works when you're trying to do it. But until you do it by mistake, it, it you're all of a sudden kind of defies what you've always thought. And you're like, maybe sometimes they want it to, want it just to sit still. The other day that actually happened to me. Did it? <laughs> where I was working, a, yeah, I was working a top a plug and I like, you know, turned to look at my phone and one ate it. And I had been working the plug for probably 45 minutes or so without a bite. And all of a sudden that happens. It's like, <laughs> So then you start trying to recreate it, and you just sit there and throw the plug out there and let it sit. Reel it back in. <laughs> throw the plug out there and let it sit. Uh, yeah. The craziest I've ever seen that happen, I might have shared this on the podcast before, but uh, my old roommate, Tommy Sade, myself, and Ben Chesney, who's been on the podcast before, were um, fishing down in the lower river, and we're fishing like some small creeks uh, mid-tide falling, like last bit of day. And the fish were fired up. We were catching some fish. We were catching two or three at like each creek mouth. You know, getting two or three blow ups at each creek mouth. And we get in this creek mouth, and Tommy bombs a top water up the creek, and big rat's nest when not in his reel. So he, like, we kind of power pull down, sit there for a little bit. We're untying it. I, I guarantee you it took at least two and a half, three minutes for him to untie it. And right as he was getting it untied, the bait had just been sitting there. A fish smokes it, and he flips the bale closed and catches the fish. And it had been sitting still on slick, calm water for, for a while. So uh, I've seen, like, when I've been on some groups of large redfish in Louisiana, um, yeah. actually that same day that I got the two redfish running into each other, we were just, there were so many fish, and they, the guys had caught so many of these fish that they were just over it. And, it, it, you know, those big schools, they're not scared of the boat. They'll almost kind of hang around the boat because it's something for them to orient to. Um, that, that we were throwing the cork out in the middle of them, and just letting it sit, like not moving at all. And fish would kind of sum up to it and look at it and just stare at it. And, and all of a sudden, one fish nudged the plug just a little bit. And as soon as it moved, another fish crushed it. So they're definitely still interested in something that might look like bait, even if it's not moving. But it's, it's like yeah. that, that movement, that little quick twitch. Same thing with like pitching a soft plastic in front of a redfish. And one little pop, you know, and they, they key in on it and, and eat it. So um, I think that can be something to think about as far as your your cadence and your retrieve yeah. is there anything else that we're missing as far as retrieve goes with like a actual walk the dog plug mm, walk the dog plug alone no i don't well no not really as far as retrieve goes but i mean you talk about different types of lures that kind of have that same action yeah you know yeah well, yeah let's do that for sure what, what were you thinking about what lures mm. were you thinking about you talking about like subsurface? So um, not even subsurface, but just other walk the dog lures that that base like the wake bait, for example. Yeah, the wake bait, definitely. Yeah, it's got that. That dude, when I when I learned about that thing, it was a game changer for guiding because you get guys that just have such a hard time getting that that walk the dog motion down. And in the summertime, it's like a lot of times you got forty five minutes in the morning to get some top water bites, and then it's over and. It takes that long to learn to walk the plug, but um, have you been yeah. have you been fishing wake baits with with much success? I I have sometimes it's the ticket even more so than the walk the dog plug. I, you know sometimes if they're if they're not biting the top what the uh, you know the regular traditional plug that will you know trigger a bite and maybe it's just less aggressive. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It doesn't quite make as much noise or splash as a traditional plug, but it still has that same wiggle action. Yeah, I think um, it looks more like a mullet on the surface than any any other yeah, topwater plug. It does. I mean, it looks very realistic yeah. to, a, to a bait fish on the surface. And one thing that I've always kind of had trouble with it is, is that that top hook always kind of gets wrapped around and hooked. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Mm -hmm. So I've put in a couple small rubber bands on that. I, I saw some guy do it on, I can't remember who it was, but I think it was on YouTube. And some guy put like a little rubber band on that top treble hook just to kind of hold it back so it doesn't wrap around. It was like going around the body of the bait and then to the exactly. hook? Oh, that's going pretty smart. The body of the bait. Yeah. So it's it just keeping really it pinned well. up there. Yeah, that's super cool. Yep. I've had to do that with some of mine, like the six cents, not the rubber band, but I've, I've made the front hook smaller. Um, mm -hmm. so that it wouldn't wrap and it does still wrap, you know, a lot of those wake baits, the nose is just so close to the, where the hook is and that cast, if right. it doesn't kind of barrel roll, it'll wrap that line. 
I'm going to drop a wake bait picture in here just so people can see what we're talking about. But um, it's essentially, it's it, it really is kind of, I feel like derived probably from a crankbait. So like a bass bass fishing lure. I mean, the 90% yeah. of the baits of the wake baits that you see um, look like a little crankbait. Um, and the bills oftentimes square like a square bill crankbait, which is for fish in shallow water. Um, but it's just straight up and down. So it doesn't really cause it to dive. If you reel really fast, it'll definitely go under just a little bit. Uh, but it, for the, for my best success, it's just been pitch it out there and just slowly roll it in it just, just fast enough that that nose wobbles and you'll just see a nice V coming off the head of it. And, and I mean, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I swear the eats on those things sometimes are way more aggressive than, than on like a walk yeah, the dog. Yeah, awesome. That bait is super fun to throw. It is super yeah. fun to throw. It, the bites always scare the crap out of me because they just come from behind it usually and just <laughs> whole head out of the water. Yeah. I've been trying to find some other baits that are similar to that. And I stumbled on one on Instagram the other day that I forget what the name of it is. But it's got like an articulated back and a, a and a bill similar to that, but it's detached on the nose of the plug. The bill's I, detached. Yeah, so the it's the not detached. I mean, it's it's attached, but it's it's another like articulation on the front. Oh wow, that's pretty sweet. So it's bill articulation, head articulation, tail. Yeah. Essentially. Okay, yep. that's sweet. Yeah. So the the bill, I guess, is wobbling at its own rate. Then the bot, then the front part of the body, then the back part of the body. So they have a lot of movement there. That's super exactly. cool. Probably gets a really good swing motion. Yeah. There there are a lot of like wake baits to too that you'll see that are articulated, where it's like you've got that um, the break in the body where you get that little bit of a wobble. And I think sure. you know later on in the year uh, when the bigger mullet are around, or like the end of the year when the mullet are leaving and all those white mullet are like five inches long those larger profile wake baits can be really effective. Those fish are looking for bigger meals. Um, but this, this time of year, I'm oftentimes trying to throw a, a slightly smaller top water, like a skitter, like a, like a skitter walk junior or like the spook junior skitter walk junior is not a thing, but the shorter skitter walk. Um, I forget what that's called. Is it a, it's not a skitter walk junior. You know what it's called? Little yeah, skitter. <laughs> um, but yeah, the smaller baits, and you get that a lot in the wake baits too. Like a, they're a lot shorter body. Had, I actually had to downsize on a topwater plug the other day, just you know, for the same reason. I was, I started out kind of on a bigger one. I think it was just the top dog, and then I went down to the top dog junior, and it was definitely a, a world of difference. They were triggering on that smaller bait for sure. Yeah, it just it seems, you know, these baby steps up to eating those bigger baits. Even in the summer too, like you can fish those full size topwaters, or definitely eat them, but. I feel like trout, which is surprising, will eat a much larger topwater than than a redfish typically will. Um, and redfish are so sloppy when they eat; they oftentimes will, you know, whiff on a bait and pop it up and, and miss it. Um, so, what what's your kind of take on retrieving a bait, a topwater bait? See if you can see it. I was talking about this. Oh yeah, that thing's sweet. You see it? Yeah, I saw the bill there for a second. It's what's it called? It's called Headbanger Lures. I'm going to pull that up real quick. Headbanger Lures. Let's see here. Yeah. Yeah, they, they look really interesting. Yeah, that's cool how the like front that. is actually articulating. Yeah. They're, and the swimming like action on that was was really awesome. Yeah, and I'm sure it's, it's just a slow, steady retrieve, and it just wiggles just like that walk the dog plug. And I think it's because of that bill that's detached just kind of causes the whole body to wiggle. Yeah, that's very sick. All right, here we go. This looks like it's the one. Add image to photos. If you're listening to the normal podcast and you want to see these baits, I'll link these baits in the description as well. Um, but you can definitely slide. Ooh, this one didn't even have a background to it. It looks like I'm all fancy here. Um, but like Jeff was saying, you can see here that the uh, the front is detached off that little eye and then you've got these different jointed parts in the body so you, that's gonna have so much motion man that thing looks a lot like a mullet to the one i got pulled up here i know i need to order one i'm prom promoting them without even trying it, they need so. to send you one for free <laughs> <laughs> uh, that thing's super cool i just thought it was really cool i stumbled upon it the other day yeah it's all these bass lures man they're just pushing the envelope so much more than the redfish people are 
in the saltwater oh. people are. It's like we fish this, you know, I'm going to fish a white gulp with a chartreuse tail, and I also have a popping cork I can add to it if the fish are being tough. You know, I guess there's just that many more people doing it. There's definitely more people doing it. I mean, you think about the access to yeah. bass for people. Everyone Everything. in the country is within two minutes of a bass. You know, and right. it's, and redfish and speckled trout and all that. There's way less people. So you got to think the people that have the smart brains that come up with lures and say they're going to design a lure and do it, you know, there's more chances of them being bass fishermen than, than saltwater fishermen. Um, I mean, yeah. I had this conversation with someone a while ago about offshore fishing. Like we look at a, someone who's uh, like a, a sport that's, and I don't know enough. I might make somebody mad by saying this, but they've been doing, they've been trolling the same baits forever. Like nothing's changed about like a skirt on a, I mean, little bits right. of things have changed, but like it's been the same thing forever. So, um, you know, the, and you think about the people that get to go offshore fish, there's way less people that get to go offshore fish than anything else, yeah. really. Um, just as, as far as access and money that it takes to go out there and do it. Um, right. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I think as inshore fishing grows, which it is, we're going to see a, a big change. And, and really, it's like a, a fishing lure is a fishing lure. Like it, maybe there's something that's a little more tailored to a redfish or a bass or whatnot, but we can take a lot of these, these bass baits and just copy them and put saltwater hardware on there and, and we're probably good to go. Um, but yeah, that's a really cool bait. Right. So I would essentially call what you just showed still a, still a, uh, wake bait. I mean, the, the way it's acting and working is a wake bait. It's just right. slightly different. Um, but this is another thing I think we should touch on for people that maybe haven't thrown top waters for redfish. Um, take me through like, you make a cast, a fish follows it, blows it up. You know, when should you set the hook? You know, how should you know when to set the hook? Take me through that process there. Yeah, so I mean, you you kind of want to you want to keep working the plug, don't stop it typically when he bites, right? You want to kind of keep moving it so he can follow it again cuz he'll come back a lot of times, right? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Even two two and three and sometimes even five times if you just keep steady working it sometimes even speeding it up moving it moving it sometimes what i'll do is i'll you know retrieve it in less but work it faster if that makes sense yeah so definitely. more action in one you know while moving it towards you slower so it can just kind of track it that sometimes helps a little bit um yeah, I, I, I always tell people, like, just keep walking the plug even when it's getting blown up on until you feel weight and then pull and set the hook. And it's not like yeah. a it's not like a bass set. You know, it's kind of like ease those trebles into them. Um, you, you set it too hard a lot of times, and, and it'll kind of ricochet out. You think six hooks on a lure, like, there's no way that fish is coming unhooked, but a single J hook is is going to stay pinned way better than, than a treble hook is ever. There's just so much leverage. You can get so much leverage on – just a single treble, and then again, if they get two on different parts of their body, they're working against each other as that fish is pulling. Um, do you have any specific hooks that you like on your plugs? You just kind of fish the standard standard hooks that you come on there. Pretty much fish the standard standard hooks. I've tried the stingers, the the stinger hooks, treble yeah, hooks. Yeah. Have you seen those? The ones that have the, the owners one larger hook. Oh oh oh, the one with yeah, the larger one. Yeah. 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 No. Yet yeah. I don't know who makes them. Have you had a, a better like might... hookup success rate with those? Have you noticed? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of went back and forth a little bit. I thought I did for for a while, and then I kind of went back and thought maybe not. Um, I just probably should fish them a little bit more and figure that out. So I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I, maybe. I'm with you. Like The only time I really change the hooks out on a plug is – when they need to be changed out. Like I'll just kind of fish what's on there. I do put the owner, it's the, called an owner stinger, but it doesn't have the longer deal. It's just like a thinner wire hook. The hookup ratio is definitely better, but you got to play the fish light. And that, that kind of brings me into another segue segues me into another thought process. And that is with trebles, like with that, all that leverage that they can get from those hooks, fishing a rod with a soft tip is very important. Like anytime you're fishing trebles, you want a lot of give in that rod. Um, you want some backbones, you can throw a topwater plug, but, but that you want that tip to be real flexy. Like you, and I learned that through bass fishing stuff. Like any time bass fishermen are throwing trebles, they've got more play in the tip. You know, if you're fishing single hooks or like a frog or something like that, you, you really want to be able to drive that single hook in 
Um, and so fishing a stiffer rod is important. But any mirror lures, X wraps, any type of jerk bait, um, anything with trebles, definitely fish something with a lighter tip, medium light, maybe a medium fast um, is kind of the way to go. But um, and, and then again with lighter wire hooks too, like those owners I was talking about, fishing something that's got some give because. Uh, you know, you'll bend those topwater hooks out really good. The, I think the best hook I've seen that comes on a topwater as far as like sturdiness and holding up is the uh, mirror lure ones, like your sandy fish. They come with a nice, stout, sturdy mm-hmm. hook. Um, I think, I don't yeah. know if it's a mustad. It looks like a mustad hook, that color. But um, yeah, so I'm going to bring up another bait here. Um, everyone's probably familiar with. I hope it didn't load in here. Um, I won't drop a picture and then, but the Whopper Plopper. So the Whopper Plopper is another cool bait. Um, really good for covering water quickly. Very easy for a novice angler to, to throw and to get bites on. I will say personally, I've had less success out of all the top waters that I've tried for redfish. The Whopper Plopper um, seems to be a little, a little too loud for some of the slot redfish. I've thrown it in Louisiana on bigger fish and they love it. They eat it really, really well, but that prop, tail from a whopper plopper sometimes is like a little bit maybe too high pitch or something but have you have you fished a whopper plopper at all um not not particularly for redfish yeah. i have for big bluefish and and stripers um but not as much for redfish i think that you know like you said it's just a little too aggressive yeah. i think maybe some of those bigger migrating redfish it might be more effective but as far as kind of you know in the in the back flats and creeks and stuff it just seems to be not not the right lure yeah i wonder if that's effective for bass for bass yeah oh yeah um i wonder if too if uh you know that whopper plopper that tail chopping is kind of has to do with the depth like i wonder if that they don't like it in that depth because when i've caught the more the fish I have caught in it on it is always a little bit deeper, like three to five feet of water, as opposed mm-hmm. to a, a foot and a half to three feet of water. Uh, I don't know what it is, and it, what what would you say that that just brought something else to my head? But what's kind of that sweet depth you like to throw top water at, and is there a tide that you prefer? Yeah, I definitely like a, a little bit of a of a higher tide, maybe not necessarily dead high tide, but um. Just to where, you know, the the grass is not really fully flooded, so they're not in areas that, you know, just where you know, less water, you know, less water to work. So the grass isn't fully flooded where they're up in, in the grass, and you just can't really work with plug. So just below the, the, that dead high tide, when the you know it's not fully fully flooded up in the grass, is kind of my favorite tide to fish. Um, usually falling, but you know sometimes the rising tide works well too yeah um low, t- low tide's great too especially this time of year i'll i'll you know still like to throw top water plugs in low tide but especially in the summertime i like like a mid to a high tide ish yeah kind of range to throw top water plugs and cover lots of ground yeah i'm i'm with you on that i, I could, i'm not even going to repeat any of it because it's i feel the exact same way um it just seems like in the summer where those fish hang out at a lower tide, it's just a little too shallow for them to kind of get under the plug and eat it. Um, they'll definitely, they don't have yeah. to get under it like a tarpon does to eat up, like, but they do need a little bit of water to, to get under the plug, it seems like. Um, and I've seen them right. eat, a, eat a plug like extremely shallow or eat a topwater really, really shallow, but more times than not, they kind of want to get a little bit of an angle to come up on it. Um, What's your favorite depth as far as actual, you know, water depth? Not necessarily tide, but... That two and a half to four feet... You yeah. know, um, you can catch them in deeper. You can catch them in shallower. Four feet's kind of getting a little too deep, but but four to two and a half seems to be pretty money. Throwing throwing yeah. any of these top waters at like creek mouths or like a like a, a high falling or like a mid falling and like early in the morning this time of year to the summer, like fishing a creek mouth or a point um, over oysters. Like over you you get a bunch of area. We got a bunch of areas here like big open bays with pods and pockets of oysters spread out around them. Um, and I mean, that's pretty money just going through an area and, and bombing top waters across oysters when the water's still high enough that the fish can kind of slide over the top of them, um, can be super effective. And I think fish are looking for that there. Like, I think those fish are, are using those oyster bars a lot of times to drive bait up and over them a little bit. 
Um, but right. but yeah, that, I would say two and a half to four feet is kind of my go-to. Um, I've got one other bait here that uh, I want to share. And I just started fishing this last year um, because a buddy in Texas told me about it. And I didn't even realize that anybody made this for salt water. But there's a ba- there's a lure in the bass world called a buzz bait. And so it's like a spinner bait, but the blade is in front of the of the soft plastic or the trailer or whatever it's going to be. And the way the blade shaped, it's like a triangle. And as it spins and and chops the water a little bit, it makes kind of a rattly noise. Uh, that if if you just threw it out there and let it sit, it would sink to the bottom. But as you reel it, that that blade brings the bait up to the surface. And chops the water, and then you have a trailer back behind it. Um, but this bait is weedless. You can throw it, like we're talking about high tide. Like I picture the river, Cape Fear River. You get all these little scalloped out k- uh, coves and bays with like that f- flooded grass in the backs and the edges where the fish will kind of lay up in them when the tide gets a little bit higher. But you can throw this bait all the way to the back of it and just rod tip up and just wind it just quick enough that it's on the surface and the redfish will come smoke it in the grass, which is super cool. And for me, it's been my most effective lure for catching them like in the grass but um i wish you could see this jeff have you fished a buzz bait much for for redfish have you ever tried a buzz bait no i have have not it's a cool bait to cover water with because because it's it's a quicker moving bait you're not going to get every fish that it passes and you might spook some fish but like if you just want to work through an area and try to find some key zones to maybe come back to and pick apart this buzz bait's pretty money um and uh I forget who makes this one. It says it on here. Let's see. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I can't quite read it, but y'all might be able to on YouTube if you're checking it out. But if you type in redfish buzz bait, you're going to get a lot of options on Google. Um, and I'll link some, like I said, in the show notes. But this is just a really good bait for fishing, you know, up near the surface and, and cover. Um, you can definitely throw it across open water as well. And the bites, like the fish that do eat this thing, it, the bites are absolutely insane. Very, very aggressive. And it's cool to get them to come up in the grass. And even if this prop in the front isn't spinning correctly when it's coming through the grass, it might hang up a little bit, but the fish will still eat it. Um, and that gold flash is, is pretty pretty money. It's a lot of a lot of gold in the redfish lures. Gold spoon, gold in the top waters. Um, and it's a popular color. Uh, can you think of anything we missed top water wise? I got one other bait here I can drop in here. It's another prop style bait. I'll drop it on here real quick. You fish a lot of, or people fish a lot of prop style topwater for striper, don't they, up north? Might have a prop in front of the head or a much, prop mostly, in the back. Just, mostly, just, mostly just like traditional like chuggers, like plugs. So you're just popping like, like you're, poppers on those? popper. Gotcha. Yeah, like poppers. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, your traditional popper. Um, That's mostly mostly. What I mean, the walk the dog lures are extremely effective too, especially if the if the water is a little calmer. But if you've got some chop up in the bay, those big aggressive um, poppers work really well. Do they? Uh, maybe not like halco size, but the ones maybe just like a little bit smaller than that, or the small halco poppers. They like they those do really well. Heck yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Th- that's the problem with you know getting some decent sized chop is is your top water start to. Um, skip and not walk correctly and fish will still eat them that's that's a good thing to talk about actually is um, i used to be under the impression of like you throw top water when it's like calm um you know that's when that's when you're mm-hmm. going to be the the best of top water but honestly i think fish eat it better when there's texture on the surface and, and even sometimes a little sloppy like those fish can key in on it, they can still see it really well um, and it breaks it up a little bit better what, what's your opinion on that yeah, I I agree one hundred percent, and I also think they seem to eat a little better when the when the water's darker or you know murky, yeah. murkier water. They seem to eat it a little bit better when that water's really clear. It's they seem to to not want it as much for sure. Yeah, they, you know, I don't know what it is. Well, it's not the See, most realistic a, looking. A piece of plastic floating in. in <laughs> Yeah, it's not the most realistic looking right, thing. Right, it's a little like, torpedo. Yeah, exactly. With some metal things banging around underneath it, some legs. Um, but yeah, it, it's, exactly. you know, we, we talk, I mean, I, shoot, we're doing a freaking fishing podcast talking just about topwaters. Like there's, you can think so much about it or you can just get out there and throw a topwater plug a lot. And a lot of people like, 
I, I get a lot of clients and, and people in the boat or just people I talk to that haven't caught redfish on top water and like, oh, you catch them on top water. But it really is such a good tool. I mean, once you you need to just pick it up and throw it until you get a fish on it because you'll realize it's one of the best search baits for redfish. Um, I mean, it is a confidence bait of mine in the summer. Like, I mean, how, how often do we you know go out in the summertime and just throw top water in the morning? Like, and and if you went and did, did the exact same, hit the same spots, like, would your confidence have gone down if you're throwing a soft plastic? You think? Right, very low. I mean, we'll, we'll do that a lot in the summertime. Just throw, just go out there and cover big bays and lots of area with just plugs. And yeah, yeah, that'll be the whole the whole bet, whole morning. For sure, yeah, it's great. Can't wait. I know. I'm excited for it too. I'm excited for everything to spread out a little bit more. It's coming, especially if it stays warm. It looks like we've got a couple cooler days here, um, but hopefully it'll kind of prolong things. I went out and looked for albacore today. Did I tell you that? Didn't I couldn't find them? Yeah, you did. Yeah. I couldn't. I mean, did I, you, I did. You were you? Go ahead. What were you saying? I said, were you not able to find any of them? No, and I couldn't spend much time out there. Um, yeah, the wind picked up pretty wind, quickly. Wind kind of picked up on you. Yeah, it picked up on me. But but I, I was what I was saying is you know these couple cooler days hopefully it'll kind of stall things out where they're at right now because everything's I mean, the ocean fishing is really good right now the red fishing is really really good right now the shallow water stuff at least um, and at least if if you're on fish they're they're fired up um, but but I am ready to get into that warmer stuff what sucks for me is like I'm about to go to Weldon to striper fish for two weeks and I feel like it's always like the that's the big transition time is when I'm gone and I get back and that like last end of May is so tough um, if you're listening to this podcast and you have a trip booked with me at the la- in the last week of May, we will we will catch some fish. Um, but but May is like a tough it's a tough time. Like it's very it, it can be some of the best fishing ever, but it can also be tough and transitionary. Um, it kicks my butt sometimes. And then you get in yeah, June, and yeah, it's like those those transition periods they they are hard, man. Yeah, you have to get reacclimated, right? You got to get get into their patterns and figure out where where the fish are and and what they're doing but you'll figure it out pretty quick yeah yeah you will it kind of it's the toughest part is just adjusting to going and catching 20 fish in a day to like five (laughs) you know right so right it's uh it's still good though the everything becomes more active the bites are more fun the shots are more interactive um, I, I think you know what, what you start to see and get out of the fish is, is is more worth it than just you know essentially fishing in a barrel in the winter time on stagnant fish just sitting in an area. Um, right. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to stop bad talking our fisher right here and just keep rolling with it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that's top water fishing um, in a nutshell for redfish. I mean, there, there's a lot more to it and there's a lot less to it. Like I've been saying. Um, but just get out there and pick a plug up and and go for it. And, and like I said, if you and Jeff said, if you can't walk the dog, you know, pick up a wake bait and throw it. I will say the wake bait's a little not quite as effective if it is choppy. I think you can get away with a plug a little bit better. Um, but just get out there and throw some topwaters. You will very quickly become you know very confident with it and and feel um, like if there's fish there they'll show themselves and that's another thing too is like they're not always going to eat it but they'll show themselves a lot of times and then you know they're there and you, you can throw soft plastic in there or any other bait but um you got anything else anything else you want to share no nah, man it's it definitely get out there and throw some top water plugs it's it's an absolute blast there's not really much of a better way to catch any any species of fish so you can go catch it plugging. you can go catch one on top water tomorrow on your new bet most definitely nice nice (laughs) well guys thanks for checking out another episode of eastern current jeff thanks for hopping on here real quick with me and knocking it out tell sarah i said thank you and uh you guys we will see y'all next week later